Right, so we are now at uh, Redux lesson 6 already and in today's lesson we will also be looking at another example of Redux reaction that is the conversion of iron 2 ion to iron 3 ion. Right, so when we look at this conversion we can see that from every 2 plus to every 3 plus, there is an increase in oxidation number. Increase in oxidation number. So what kind of reaction is this? When I am converting Fe2 to Fe3 plus, obviously, this reaction is an oxidation reaction. So how do I complete the half equation or ionic equation for this reaction? It's simple. When Fe2 is converted to Fe3, Actually, I should write the electron on the right-hand side. And I only need one electron. So to write the ionic equation for the conversion of Fe2 to Fe3, this is how I do it. Okay, so in the exam, how you will be tested is usually the question will show that I have a solution. Okay, I have a test tube. And in the test tube, I have a solution that contains Fe2 plus ion. What's the meaning of Fe2 plus ion? So example, iron 2 sulfate solution. Okay, very simple. Iron 2 sulfate solution. The iron 2 tells you you are now having an Fe2 plus ion. Right. So how are you supposed, how are you supposed to convert Iron 2 to iron 3, very easy. Since this is an oxidation reaction, I'm doing oxidation reaction. So what you can do is, you can add a few drops of oxidizing agent. So how you carry out the conversion of Fe2 to Fe3 is by adding oxidizing agent all right so how you do it how you convert fe2 to fe3 by adding oxidizing agent because oxidizing agent can help to oxidize iron 2 to iron 3 so if question asks you what must be added to iron 2 so that it becomes an iron 3 ion the answer is very simple you can add any oxidizing agent just give the name of any oxidizing agent all right so what are the examples of oxidizing agent that you can suggest we have four and the two the first two are quite easy but um, the last two is quite complicated all right so now let's look at chlorine and bromine water first. All right. So chlorine water, we are referring to Cl2 and bromine water, we are referring to Br2. Right. So what happened is, so what will happen is, let's say now, okay, I have Fe2 plus solution, iron 2 sulfate. So in order to make it become Fe3 plus, I can add chlorine water. Okay, okay, I can add chlorine water because why? Okay, so far we know that chlorine or any halogen, they tend to gain electrons, right? All the chlorine, bromine, iodine, they all like to gain electrons. All the group 17, they like to gain electron because they have seven valence electrons. So when they gain one, they become stable. So during this reaction, what happened? So what happened? Chlorine is going to gain electron and hence it forms chloride ion. So when I balance the equation, I get Cl2, so I end up getting a two chloride, and I have two electrons for this reaction. So what happened to these electrons? Okay, so what happened is, on the other hand, when my chlorine gained electron to become two Cl minus, right? Where does this electron come from? Very simple, because in the same test tube, in the same test tube, another reaction is going on that is Fe2, becoming Fe3+, plus. and because I put my electron on the right-hand side, it shows me that Fe2 is somehow donating electrons. So you see this reaction, why is it that when I want to convert Fe2 to Fe3, I add chlorine? The concept is very simple, because iron 2 will donate electron, and therefore the chlorine will gain the electron. Okay, so you get the idea how this works, converting Fe2 to Fe3, you can add chlorine. So during the reaction, iron 2 donate electron and the chlorine gain it. 
okay? So the reaction works, okay? So you're able to convert Fe2 to Fe3, all right? So other than using chlorine, I can have another oxidizing agent that is bromine. So how am I going to carry out the reaction? Okay, again, I have Fe2+. plus. So in order to convert my Fe2 to Fe3, I can add bromine water. So what will happen is during this reaction, Fe2 plus again will become Fe3 plus. Guys, for information, right, for this redox reaction, every time you see, if you have Fe2 at the beginning, then at the end, confirm it will become Fe3, nothing else. Okay, or vice versa in the next lesson, we actually will learn the opposite that's Fe3 to Fe2. But for now, just remember one thing if at the beginning you have Fe2, then at the end, most of the time, you will get Fe3. Okay, so to complete the equation, I will write my electron on the right hand side. Okay, so now I see Fe2 become Fe3 is an oxidation reaction, so it donated electron. And where do these electrons go? This electron is being accepted by bromine okay to form bromide ion okay as simple as that so if question asks you how you convert fe2 to fe3 you can either choose to add chlorine or you can choose to add bromine either one will work because during this reaction fe2 donate electron and the chlorine or the bromine readily accept them okay right this is how it works huh? so if question asks for any oxidizing agent, chlorine or bromine, because they can oxidize your iron 2 to iron 3. Alright, okay. By now, I think that um, you are quite uh, well versed with this conversion of Fe2 to Fe3 already. Alright, and you know what is needed to be added to the iron 2 so that it becomes Fe3. Now, for this reaction, sometimes a question will ask about observation question will ask about observation. So what will you say about observation? Okay, very simple. In the previous lesson, when we talk about halogens and halide, we learn the colors. Okay, we learn the colors. Okay, and then on the other hand, I have a very important memorization of color that you need to memorize. That is, do you remember in chapter 8, we memorize the color of iron 2 and iron 3? Iron 2 and iron 3? Iron 2, iron 3? What are their color? Iron 2 is green color. Whereas, iron 3 plus is brown color. So, in this direction of converting iron 2 to iron 3, one very obvious observation is your green solution goes brown. So, for the second reaction, it's the same thing, right? Fe2 becoming Fe3. So, you can also write back the same observation. Green solution goes brown. Alright? So, basically, for every time when you have this reaction, when you have iron 2 in your test tube at first, what will happen at the end of the day? They will ask you what's the color change of iron, right? You will have to say it goes from green to brown, green to brown, that's it. Okay, so now we know that in order to convert Fe2 to Fe3, I can either add chlorine or bromine. Is there any other oxidizing agent except, I mean, uh, other than chlorine and bromine? Yes, and who are they? Right, the first one is acidified potassium manganate 7 solution. So the formula is KMnO4 slash H plus, okay? The slash H plus shows that the KMnO4 is already acidified. That means it has been added with acid so that it can function, okay? Without acid, it somehow couldn't function. And the second, oh, sorry, the last oxidizing agent that I can have is acidified potassium dichromate 6 solution, right? So the formula is K2, Cr2, O7, slash H. H plus. And again, this oxidizing agent, it only functions when it is acidified, all right? In normal condition, mm, it doesn't really work as an oxidizing agent, all right? Okay, so how am I going to carry out this experiment? Very simple. The concept is very simple. As usual, when I have Fe2, okay, now what can I add? Instead of adding chlorine, I add K2 
Fe2Cr2O7 or KMnO4, then very quickly I will see the green solution, Fe2 turns to Fe3. So I'm not going to draw the same diagram. The diagram is just the same, but comes with different labeling. All right. And for these two reactions, again, I will see that my Fe2 plus changing to Fe3 plus. Okay, I will be seeing my Fe2 plus changing into Fe3 plus. Okay, sorry, no tree here. Okay, and observation will still be the same. Lah. Green solution goes brown every time. Then, how do I write the ionic equation? How do I write the ionic equation for acidified potassium manganate? Now, please take note. For this chapter, chapter 3, usually when you see this compound that has potassium, okay, you can ignore the potassium. Just ignore the potassium. Okay, then who should you focus on? You focus on the manganate 7 ion and the dichromate 6 ion when writing the half equation. Because somehow the potassium ion is just, you know, do nothing. It doesn't really involve in the reaction. So how am I supposed to write the half equation for my manganate? Okay, very simple. My manganate ion is MnO4 minus... Okay, now you need to memorize something. You need to memorize something. That is, the MnO4 minus will end up becoming Mn2 plus. Okay, this is something you have to memorize. Manganate 7 become Mn2 plus. Memorize this. Memorize this. Memorize this. After that, just do by balancing. What do I mean by do by balancing? Okay, so now I have one Mn. Then after the arrow, I have Mn. So the quantity of Mn is balanced already. Next, I have four oxygen here, but no oxygen on the right-hand side. So what must I do? This side, I must balance it with by adding oxygen. But then don't write oxygen, but write water. So because I have four oxygen, four oxygen, so I need a total of four water. That gives me four O. Four O. So now I see I have Mn, one quantity of Mn, and one Mn here. So the quantity of Mn is balanced. Four oxygen and four oxygen here. Oxygen is balanced. But then suddenly, I have four times two of hydrogen. Four times two of hydrogen. And this side, there's no hydrogen, right? So just top up here with four times two is total eight. Top it up with hydrogen ion. Why I top it up with hydrogen ion? Because just now you can see the manganate comes with hydrogen ion. Okay? So here, 4 times 2, 8. Alright? So now I check again. Is my balancing correct or not? Simple. 1 mn and 1 mn is balanced. 4 oxygen and 4 oxygen is balanced. 8 hydrogen and 4 times 2 is balanced. So the last thing we'll do is now we have to determine where to place our electron, where to keep our electrons. Huh? Simple. I check the charges. This is a negative 1. And this is a positive 8. That makes a total charge on this side positive 7. Whereas this side, the charge is only plus 2. So which side is more positive? Left hand side more positive, right? So I'm going to add electrons here. And it will be 5 electrons because the difference between 7 and 2 is 5. Right? So this is how I write the half or ionic equation for manganate ion. Okay? Right. Up next, how am I going to write the half equation for potassium dichromate 6? Again, ignore the potassium. Ignore the potassium. Just focus on the chromate. So, I'm going to write this. Chromate is... Cr2O7 and the charge is 2 minus. After the reaction is going to form, okay, I can see 2Cr here, right? 2Cr. So I straight write 2Cr. And the charge is 3 plus. So this is something you have to memorize. Chromate after the reaction becomes Cr3 plus. Cr3 plus 2 because I have a Cr2 here. As usual, oxygen. On the left-hand side, you balance it on the other side by adding water. So 7O, here I just put 7H2O. So that make up for 7 oxygen. And this side, I'm going to add how many hydrogen ion? 
how many hydrogen ions to balance the 7 times 2? 14. Okay, and lastly, it's time for me to do the checking for charges. Alright, so this one, the chromate ion has a charge of negative 2. And here, the charge of 14 hydrogen ion is plus 14. So this side total positive 12. Whereas this side, water has no charge, so just ignore the water. 2Cr3+, right, 2 times 3+, plus, so here plus 6. Plus 12 and plus 6, of course, the plus 12 is more positive, right? So I'm going to put my electron here. And because the difference is 6, so I'm going to put a 6 electron. So I'm done. Alright, so let's do a recap for today's lesson. What is today's lesson? It's the conversion of Fe2 to Fe3. Okay, and because you undergo oxidation, you undergo oxidation, you actually lose electron during the reaction. Okay, and when I want to convert Fe2 to Fe3, this is oxidation reaction. So I need to give the iron to an oxidizing agent. What are the examples of oxidizing agent I can use? Chlorine, bromine, acidified potassium manganate 7 solution or acidified potassium dichromate 6 solution. Each time when you convert Fe2 to Fe3, the ionic equation is the same for the iron. All right, it's Fe2 to Fe3 plus E is the same because I'm doing the same reaction Fe2 to Fe3, just that you use different oxidizing agent to accomplish this reaction. So for different oxidizing agent, you will have to write different half equation. And every time, you will have one observation that is your green solution will go brown. This is because your iron 2 ion has become Fe3 ion. Alright, so I hope you are clear with this one. So basically, the concept is you need to know Fe2 to Fe3 is oxidation and you need oxidizing agent to carry out this conversion and the examples of oxidizing agent is here each of them come with different ionic equation all right okay now i hope that you're okay with this conversion and you have any question please don't hesitate to text me right last but not least last but not least we need to learn how to write the overall ionic equation. Okay, what is meant by overall ionic equation? I'll take one example. Huh? I'll take one example. Let's say when I do the conversion of Fe2 to Fe3, when I do the conversion of Fe2 to Fe3, okay, I use bromine to do this reaction. So in this reaction, what happened is my Fe2 undergo oxidation. Okay, my Fe2 undergo oxidation. Uh, so if Fe2 is the one that undergoes oxidation, then what is the reaction that bromine undergoes? Reduction, right? Because it gained electron and you can also see oxidation number decrease from 0 to negative 1. So this is the half ionic equation for oxidation. This is the half ionic equation for reduction. Now, how am I going to write overall ionic equation? How to do that? Okay, now what you need to do is, I'm going to show you the working here. The working is very simple. You just copy back the half equation first. And the other one, I have Fe2+, plus becomes Fe3+, plus, plus E. Okay, so you just copy back and do a matching of electrons. Do matching of electrons. For the first half equation, I have two electrons, but the second half, I only have one electron. So what must you do is, you must make sure the number of electrons is same for each equation. So what you do, for the second equation, right, the whole equation times two. So here I'm gonna put two, two, two. So now, two electrons, right? Now, just cancel the two electrons, okay? Because they are present in left and right-hand side. So anything that repeats on both sides, I'm going to cancel them. 
So after you cut off the electrons, just copy what remains. So I have a Br2, 2 Fe2+, and then there's nothing left here. Arrow, 2 Br-, minus 2 Fe3+. Plus. All right, so this is the overall ionic equation for the reaction between Fe2 and bromine. So your homework for today, I hope that you can try, I hope that you can try to also write the overall ionic equation for the remaining three reaction. All right, that's all for today. Thank you.